There's no way that she's that short. <laughs> she is so tiny. Huh, huh. Claire is so tiny. Oh, okay. We were we were crouching. But still, that doesn't help much. She's like three feet tall. That's awesome. Hell yeah. It makes us sneakier. So we can push people harder. And they explode. 50% of the time. Alexander tasked us with talking to Katerina. And she has a test for us, apparently. Kind of nervous about what it is. It's probably going to involve... I think uh, he was talking... Uh, Alexander was talking about Gregory. So it has to do with the canes. So let's find out. I feel as if you were sent by destiny itself. Oh no. No, no, no. <laughs> Run away. Alexander has tasked me with finding out the truth about Simon's death from Gregory. Makes me feel uneasy. But oh, there was something about the mistresses too. Hopefully we can circle back to that. We'll see. But why would he give you such a difficult task, my child? He is well aware that the Canes, blinded by fury, are looking for the mysterious man-eater who supposedly murdered Simon. We already know who Simon's murderer is, so so that's not really a thing. She's kind of getting blamed for that. And then her being the man-eater, which she may, may well be. Clara might be that, kind of in a different sense. So not in like the boogeyman kind of sense, I suppose. In their anger, they're missing the obvious, but such is that family's way. Even our protection may be of no use. Well, the truth will speak for itself. They won't dare hurt me, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think they would plot against you. Um, the Canes are super plotting. But I'm still unsure about the Canes' overall intentions. I'm kind of hoping to learn... I mean, I, I think the Bachelor's route is where you learn the most about the Canes. Because they are your adherents and you are aligned with them. For the most part, if you choose to be. So, we're probably not going to get a lot of information, just a different perspective. Uh, perhaps. But Gregory will never speak to you, will he? Or do you wield such power over people to be able to make him talk? No, I don't have any such power. But we could trick him in, into thinking that he can trust us. But cunning will become the solution where power can't. If you help me, I can make him answer questions. And how will you find out the truth? How will you make him reveal it? I would call a person by their real name twice and say the words such and such. I know of you this. Will you agree to touch me, to brave the depths, to answer my questions candidly and without prejudice? If the answer is yes, then it's done. Hmm. So she has the power to compel people to tell the truth so long as you call them by their real name and they consent. <laughs> okay. Why I know of you this, it feels like a part of the phrase is omitted. Mm, that might be the trick. Yeah, what what she's not saying is the trick to getting them. And if with consent, then you can get them to talk, maybe. It is. You really have to know a secret about a person, which it would stun them to hear. Oh, okay. But the secret must be true, of course. For example, you can say, Anna, oh Anna, I know of you this. You've kidnapped a child. Oh! <gasps> How does she know that? I don't know how Clara knows that. That's nuts. What is that supposed to mean? Why did you say that? It's just an example. Do you know any secrets? <laughs> she just brushes it off, even though it's absolutely true. Do you know any secrets concerning Gregory Kane? Yes, I will teach you. First of all, call him Judge. Do not call him Gregory at first. Yeah, we have to call him by his name, though, in order to make this work. But maybe when we first meet him, we'll, we'll just say judge. The Canes are clever, and he may immediately become suspicious. If you want to stun him with the secret, try to say, you never loved Simon. You are no twin of his. Oh, like literally? I mean, I knew they were brothers. And no, yeah, I, I think I remember him telling the Bachelor that Simon is his twin. But I get like a feeling, even though... Gregory has like reverence for Simon. It's very envious, it seems. Like he's always comparing himself to him and saying he doesn't add up and stuff, but but there's like it's dripping kind of with uh envy and jealousy. Yeah, he will be taken aback by this. All right, yeah, that works. I think we have all the pieces then to make him talk. I don't know what question we're going to ask him. I'm not sure what we're supposed to be finding out. Thank you. But it's not but it is not Gregory that you should be wary. I feel that the Kane's plot was conceived in a different mind. Maria, <laughs> probably. Maria plays dumb, but that girl's plotting. 
That girl is planning. That girl is scheming. <laughs> it all comes from Maria, <laughs> exactly, who is about to challenge my position of mistress. But do not even think of approaching her yet. She is very dangerous. Yeah, I agree with you. Yet she plays it off. Like for the longest time during the bachelor route till the very end. Uh, I was like, dude, Maria is just kind of a doofus. Like she's like weird and flighty and kind of goofy. But no, she's the one pulling the strings for the most part. She's very dangerous. Your formula will not work on someone who has mistress's abilities. All right. Yeah, I'll follow your advice. Cool, yeah, so the Crucible, the residence of the Canes. For some reason, thinking of this place, I begin to shudder, and my feelings wander between fear and anger. Gregory is here. All right. Oh, I wanted to ask you about the mistresses. And we still don't have our adherents yet. Now look here. Since you're holding the threads of life in your wondrous hands, I'm going to entrust you with several people. Hell yeah, here we go. They are all wicked people. Their souls as black as soot. I wonder if they have like griefs on there. <laughs> Each one of them is either an avowed evildoer or hiding a sinister secret. You must take care of them. Okay. Yeah, of course. I'll take care of them. After all, who is more in need of care than those rejected by everyone? They'll get their own chance to serve a good cause, won't they? Yeah. I kind of feel, I get the feeling like Claire's multiple dialogue options are either Clara or the changeling. It's like two sides of the same coin. And it just depends on how you want to play her, whether she becomes more... I don't know if this is on base at all, but whether she becomes more like the Changeling or more like Clara. But it's hard because I know very little about either. Trust me, I know. I can see into the future. The sinners who I will now name will be of use to you in due time. In that way, in what way, I know not. But I know that they will be. The likelihood is fairly great. So make sure that they live... Unless you should see it more fit that they die. Is this agreed? Yeah. Uh, I'll grant life to those who deserve to live, and I'll be the doom of those who must die. And now hear me. All I have told you is between you and I alone. Don't say a word about anything. Most importantly, keep it from my husband. Huh. I thought you had no sec- No. I thought you had no secrets from each other? No way. Yeah, Alexander and Katerina are not like- having chit chat over coffee in the morning <laughs> i don't see it but i'll ask anyway thought you had no secrets from each other he is not his own master he is a ruler a man of duty two men are living inside of him it would drive him insane to find out that i have charged you with taking care of those who his duty dictates that he should suspect indict and execute he trusts my premonitions too much yeah so basically she's kind of married to a cop and she has to do kind of like untoward things to further hers and kind of by proxy his agenda. So, and yeah, he would be infuriated if he found out that we were supposed to protect them, even though Katarina is doing it for a greater purpose. But well, what should I do then if he asks me directly about stuff? You can never misstep for every action you take is governed by supreme justice. Decide as nature tells you. Listen to your feelings. All right. Well, I can't promise anything. But I'll be mindful of your requests. May I have a look at them? <laughs> Bad griefs first. Of course. And we got Reuben, Aspdi, Yulia. Yulia. Interesting. I wonder, so all these people are guilty of something or have some kind of thing in their past. Like Anna, we, we already know her secret. Grief, that's pretty self-explanatory. Reuben's kind of like a pariah. Not yet, but he will become more so. Kind of like Artemy as well. Um, Aspdi... I don't know. Probably just kin stuff. And then the Sabrobs. That's that's crazy that she lumps herself in with these people as well. Laura. That's kind of confusing. I don't know that Laura's done anything wrong. Her father. I know that her father was executed. Uh, he was like a commander or something. But yeah, he was executed long ago. And then the foreman of the abattoir we have not met. Is this Anya? I think so. Yeah, it's not Tychek. All right, cool. Yeah, we need to visit all of these people on day one, probably. Oh, there it is. Yeah, this is what I wanted to ask. Uh, Who are the mistresses? Give me a history lesson, please. Women who weave time into threads of power. They let power go through them and then let the threads back out. Even as men are building a town from wood and stone, the mistresses weave its soul from intangible sub substances. The joys and the sorrows, the epiphanies and the lethargies. The feelings, the inspirations, that is the yarn 
that the mistresses spin. How did they appear? There was a time when the head of each of the three families brought into his house a woman of supernatural powers. Okay. The first one was Victor Kane, Simon and Gregory's brother. Oh, so the, the advent of the mistresses isn't that old? So Nina was first generation? Because yeah, Victor Kane's mistress would be Nina. He had lived in the capital when he was a young man. Matters concerning running of his estate had been a pretext for his leaving, but in truth, he was attracted by something entirely different. Namely, I'm not in a position to tell you at this point. Because of the connections he had made in those circles, he became acquainted with one Nina Lilich. And yeah, we know that Nina Lilich is Aglaya's sister, the aunt to Maria. A bright, refined, devilish aristocrat who fell for Victor for some reason, and he brought her here in this faraway corner of the steppe. Oh shit, so the town is not even that old? They built, okay, so it's like only, I don't know how old Victor is, but if he was old enough to like get married and stuff, then it would be like 30 years ago or so? Oh shit. And what happened then? It turned out then that Nina was harboring plans concerning this place. And the Cain's elders, Gregory and Simon, had certainly impressed her. To put it briefly, Nina became the ruler of this land. I was only, what, like 15 at the time? Oh, so Victor's actually older than he appears. That's kind of the Cain family thing, is they live, they have a, a like pretty long longevity. Nina died 11 years ago. We already know, like, the, instead of asking, are there differences between the mistresses, we already know. I would like to know more but each one kind of governs a different property and they're all meant to balance each other out. But I wouldn't mind asking for more information. I also want to know this, but I don't know if Katarina even knows where their power comes from. It doesn't seem like she knows. Yeah, are they different, these mistresses, and how? Each of the three families has been professing its own version of the truth for many generations. Each family has embodied the power of a certain color. Each is trying to refashion the world in its own likeness. It is good that the antagonism between the families prevents any single power from gaining the upper hand. We are building a town together, all of us, and we are building it through opposing each other. Mm-hmm. What about the mistresses, Nina and Victoria? Yes, their conflict had raged over the town for a long time. Peaceful, invisible to ordinary people, but no less furious for it. Nina was striving to get to a place where no human being is allowed and dragging her followers along, believing that her goal justi justified their suffering. Victoria protected the people from her, sculpted the very flesh of the town for as long as she was alive. Yeah, Victoria is uh, Capella, also named Victoria's mother, but she's dead now. And Capella's kind of going to come into her own as a mistress if you play it a certain way. Otherwise, she kind of gets put off to the sides for another generation. Um, is she dead too, Victoria? She is, mysteriously. They are both survived by daughters. Nina before Maria and Victoria had little Victoria, who our children call Capella. Both girls were orphaned at an early age and each grew up to manifest the abilities. There is a young mistress growing up in each of the families. Well, except for yours. Yeah, I don't know if... Katarina is like unable to have a daughter or they just chose not to. But yeah, so you have a daughter too? You're also like that, aren't you? The third one, the youngest mistress in the town, and the only one as of now is myself. The only mistress without an heiress. Everything has its limits in this world. Everything is balanced. Woe is me. But you and I will discuss that later. Which, yeah, I could see um, that uh, Claire is going to be kind of put forth as a new mistress eventually and adopted by the Savarovs. All right, fine, as you wish. All right, cool. So, yep, we read that part, Um, our adherence list. So we need to go over to the Canes, but before we go there, let's try and visit, yeah, here, let's go visit all the adherents that we can. First up is Anna. Holy shit, Anna. My exhaustion is terrible. Life is hard. It is. It really is. You are not me. So ugly. 
And then there's the second newcomer, just as sinister. In fact, he seems even scarier than The Bachelor. Why else would they call him the Ripper? Oh, Artemy? Why is he hiding somewhere in Earth, so close to me? What does he want? Are you scared of Artemy? My goodness, everything points to this Ripper being a heinous murderer. He's unstoppable. He could wrestle down Andre Martin with just one arm. And forget Andre. The ghastliest thing is, is that he apparently killed some homeless boy in the step today. Oh, don't worry. It wasn't he who killed the homeless boy. <laughs> it's not this neighbor of yours that you ought to be afraid of, Anna Angel. That's actually true. Good heavens. So it's true? Looks like you're not particularly interested in who killed them. So it's not the prospects that you're afraid of. Oh, that was short. I want to go back. How in the world did I end up in a place this remote? All right, if you say so, I'll ask. I feel sorry for you. Oh, do ask. Oh, what a weird sentence. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, do ask, my dear. You see, my life is in danger, and I'll have a present for you afterwards. So what do you say? Your life's in danger. What does this have to do with... Oh, never mind. I'll find out the truth anyway. Wait, what? I don't know what happened here. Here lives a small flock of orphans. They call themselves the souls and a half. That scary ripper who calls himself the Horospex has already met with their leader. What's the quest? <laughs> I'm confused. What happened? Those with freedom of choice. Anna told me to ask the strayed children at the warehouse about which side the terrifying messenger has taken. That monster, clad in leather, licensed to cut all manner of flesh. Okay. I wasn't quite sure from the dialogue, but that is a quest. So, ask the children... I think the map marker was... Yeah, there it is. I did want to visit all of our adherents, but I kind of don't want to go all the way out of our way. So let's uh, let's do these quests. I want to get them done before the day's over. And our, <laughs> we're going to have to sleep at some point because of our exhaustion. But first, let us go across town and talk to Gregory. Oh, Gregory, are you an oops judge? Hopefully this conversation goes okay. And if it doesn't... We'll just save. What is this now? Here's an unexpected visitor indeed. Can't believe what I'm seeing. I don't, can't tell if that's positive or negative. Hmm. There's so much anguish in your eyes. So much pain. I don't know if you'd view that as patronizing. It would be interesting though. Let's try it. Yeah. It's a hell of an opener. You do look like a regular human being on the outside. No, I'm not who you're looking for. See, I've even come to you on my own accord. Because, yeah, we're being kind of framed in a way for the murder, or at least suspected of it. I have a heartache. I must say, if it were up to me, I'd have you executed without further ado. Okay, so that's where we stand. You owe your life to the Bachelor, in a way, for he told us, although there is little doubt left, that you are a changeling spawned by the step. The shape that you assume when you visited upon him was unexpectedly uncharacteristic of any demon he knows of. What are you talking? Oh, did... Okay, so Danny saw us heal the dude and he vouched for us, basically. What are you talking about? You laid your hands... Yeah. You laid your hands on a mortally wounded man and brought him back to life, calling on holy powers to bear witness. Your demeanor was, so they say, like that of a miracle worker or even a saint of sorts. Is this so? Hmm, I only bring goodness into the world? No, that's not true. <laughs> we exploded a kid. Even if the kid was evil, um, that's not only goodness. I can work miracles. It has been attested. All the same, I don't believe you. Besides, you claim to have an evil twin? So, which one of you is the real one, and which is the changeling? I wonder why people keep using changeling in terms like when they're talking about Clara, only some of the time. It's interesting. I've done the honest thing to come before you, so you can see for yourself. Why have you come to me, fearsome child, posing as a miracle worker? I wanted to ask you about Simon, the, the late ruler. Is that so? Very well. I will lend you my ear, but no sooner than you have met Maria, <laughs> my niece. No, this is the one thing Katarina told us not to do. Let her look at you with her own eyes and tell me who you are and how I should treat anything you tell me. <laughs> I won't go. Ugh, we don't have a choice. 
that's not gonna fly. He won't stand for that. All right, where can I find her? Yeah, I know where to find her. <laughs> oh, so what is that? The road to Gregory's desolate heart lies through Mar Maria's bedroom. Shit. Actually, bedroom? Oh, exhaustion. We could actually sleep there too. Why is my own heart beating so hard? As if Maria will see through me and discover something I myself have no awareness of. So scary. Definitely scary. But yeah, I got a little bit of food so we can eat and sleep for like two hours. Drugless sleep, probably. No, we have drugs. We have one morphine. I'd prefer not. I'd rather have that menindrome or whatever it's called. Morphine's a little bit stronger than that. I suppose we'll see. We'll see. We'll sleep afterwards. Not for too long, though. <sighs> Hi, Maria. Your face looks familiar. Perhaps you've seen my sister? My evil <laughs> twin sister. We look exactly like each other. I know who you are. I just can't quite get a grasp of your essence. Where people have a soul, you have a black pit. What name have you chosen for yourself? Uh, chosen the name Clara. Same as my sister's. Uh, why can't I move on my own? What is it? Well, your uncle Gregory has sent me to you so that you could take a look at me and say what you think of me. Why should I? I have no idea. I'm just trying to do as the proverbial Romans do. This is a Rome that one doesn't come uninvited to in the first place. What did Gregory ask you about? He said you should have a look at me. We're being like, you know, super evasive about this. <laughs> How touching. Since when has this place become a hospital reception room? An elderly doctor sending a patient for examination. Shall I write you a prescription? I mean, I guess there's no need. Just say the word. I'll let him know. Done and done. I suppose I was too quick to laugh at you. Let me see. You seem as though you were two people. You're a walking lie. But you shouldn't be killed just yet. Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> Everything depends on how this day ends. I'll have them tell Uncle to talk to you. Let him answer your questions. So she assessed us and views us as not a threat currently. All right. Goodbye, Maria. That was kind of weird, but okay. Double save. And our early afternoon routine, instead of nighttime routine, we moisturize. We eat food that we don't have much left of. Oh, I should have drank the milk instead. That's okay. I'm going to take the drugs and sleep for three hours. That's okay. We have plenty of time. We finished our main quest, so I'm not that worried. But hopefully that heals our exhaustion enough to get through this quest. I suppose we'll find out. This looks like a child's bedroom. Con? Mmm, this might be Con's room. I think, right? Possible, yeah. Alright, judge. We can speak. So, my dear guest? Well, Maria wishes to say, Maria has already said all that she had wanted to say. Don't be surprised. Now you wanted to ask me something, did you not? Feel free to ask. Okay. Gregory, oh Gregory, I know of you this. You didn't like Simon, and you were no twin of his. Will you agree to touch me, to brave the depths, to answer my questions candidly and without prejudice? Yeah, that's what we're supposed to say. Even though Katarina said don't call him judge, but we already got permission to talk to him and stuff, so... And we have to say his name, otherwise it doesn't work. It has to be their true name. So, yeah. Ask away. All right, that was easy. Oh, do you know who murdered Simon? And he asked to tell the truth. Do you know who murdered Simon? No. Hmm. Deep inside, you know he wasn't murdered by anyone? No, no, no. Are you sure that he was murdered in the first place? No. Oh. Do you believe that I'm not the murderer? Why have you ordered everyone to search for the murderer? If there is a murderer, they must have no chance of escape. Hmm. Why are you afraid they would escape? No human being could have killed Simon. He was killed by a creature of supernatural powers. 
Yeah, I mean, we know that Simon was killed from the sand pest. So, will you kill them once you catch them? No, I want to know what power it wields. Yeah, the ability to actually kill Simon. Interesting. And now for my final question. Will any of the Keynes benefit from his death? Yeah, I mean... It, I did originally suspect one of the Canes in order to like further their own power, especially Gregory would be super suspect, but I don't believe that's the case. Yeah. What are you going to do now? Let's ask that. I will try to keep believing that his death was an accident for as long as I can keep this belief alive. I'll be able to strive for the creation for our creation to flourish as it always did. Will you replace Simon? No, none of us would be able to advance and sustain the town in the way that Simon did. And if his death was not a tragic accident, but the ruling of some remorseless law, it will mean that our family's entire cause has been condemned. The town will perish. All right, sleep, poor man. Let some sleep soothe you, at least a little. It's interesting. Some good information there. Nothing like groundbreaking that we didn't know before. My heart is beating something horrible. How could something this terrifying ever happen? I can go back to the rod now. All right. So we completed that once we get back to Katarina. Cool. But yeah, like I said, not like absolutely groundbreaking, but a little bit of good information. Should we go talk to Victor? Eh, I don't think Victor would have anything to say. Oh, <gasps> I know who we can talk to, though. <laughs> we can talk to <gasps> Eva. So happy to see you. Yes. I know you. I've seen you in a dream. You're Clara. But you really have the face of someone who's hounded. Have they frightened you? I am being hounded, Eva. It's true. Oh, okay. All right, Eva. I'm sure we'll talk sometime soon. All right, so we only have one quest left for today. I mean, we got to go back to the rod, but uh, we need to go talk to Notkin and his crew to figure out like what side Artemis on I suppose and then we'll get back to Anna and if we need to go back to her and then Katarina so yeah let's go see Nakin something's wrong with my head mm -hmm, it is I haven't seen you here before what district are you from I've come from the steppe I smell smoke keep close to our lot do you like wild beasts like wolves and cats yeah I do but uh, let's ask, did you see a man calling himself the Ripper? Well, oh, he's been here all right. <laughs> it's a great reaction to Artemy being around. A right scary husky fellow, that one. I know I, I've got no idea what got into his head to come over. I sure hope that I've seen the last of him. Hmm, why? Welp, it's a nasty story. That scoundrel, Laika, the one that we blew up, <laughs> has committed a lowly vitly. Villa, like villainy, I think? I don't know what that word is. I haven't ever seen it before, but that's what I'm assuming. Sold this out to just about everyone out there. The thieves, the dogheads too. And then he poisoned a friend he'd robbed and ran away. I was, Jesus. Okay, so yeah, that kid was getting into a lot of trouble. I was angry, so I said the rascal deserved to be killed. Angry as hell. And along came this bloody prospects out of nowhere. Hmm. Yeah, that's how it usually happens with people of the kind. He said... I'll do the job. I like it a whole lot when business gets bloody. That's what Artemy said? Weird. I'll find that scoundrel of yours, he said, and see if he deserves death. I'll cut him to pieces right on the spot. I don't know what possessed me to agree, but I did. Hmm. Are you regretting it now? There, there. How did it come about at all that such words escaped your lips, Nakin? I don't know what to do with myself now. If I could only bring him back, a scoundrel, just to think that I gave someone the right to decide if he lived or died. That's true. Who are we to ever have such privilege? <laughs> but perhaps he's left a traitor alive after all? Uh, I'm afraid not. Like is not the type to make an impression of a creature deserving to live. And they say that some young lad's been killed by the station. The depiction matches, or the description matches. Don't despair. The Rospects spared him. I know that for certain. Yeah, that's actually true. It's kind of a white lie or just an omission, but yeah. And how do you know that? Yeah, it was me who decided. 
But no, his death was inevitable. Higher powers killed him, not you. He wasn't a boy at all, but a real monster. So don't blame yourself. Nah, I'll just say I just do. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so what did that get us? It doesn't matter to me anymore. What side the prospects will take? Three times in a single day, I saw his fate decided. Condemned by one, set free by another, and then assisted by destiny itself. Behold, though, how much suffering it has brought. I mean, how does that lead back to Anna, though? I mean, I guess we could put her mind at rest? About Artemy? I suppose? I don't know. I'm a little fuzzy on this quest. Well, Anna, I found out everything. Turns out that you're an odd one, Anna. And so, yes, that homeless boy was attacked by the Horospex and he's dead now. No. Oh shit, you could just straight up admit to it. Damn. Let's just go with the Horospex let the homeless boy go. <laughs> yeah, it seems the safest bet. Oh, thank goodness. But perhaps he didn't do it out of the kindness of his heart, did he? Uh, quite likely not. It must have been a calculated move. He was afraid that another murderer would make his existence in the town impossible. I mean, who knows? Maybe it was kindness? Time will tell who's evil and who's good. And we won't have to wait too long now. Be patient. And this Notkin, don't you think that he's a little cutthroat? It's good that he and his friend Casper are in a feud. Or they'd have gotten to us by now. Now, Notkin's not like that. Notkin spoke out of anger and frustration and because he's a kid, man. Yeah. Now explain to me why you're so afraid of circus performers. How come? Although you're a kind girl, aren't you? I suppose every cloud has a silver lining. You know, I'll tell you one of my secrets, but hush hush about it. Children are the root of all evil in this world. Yeah, I know how you feel. Don't be silly. Children are evil. It's not in their nature. No, Anna. Evil comes from elsewhere. I'm not going to let her get away with that. Oh, we got a reputation bonus. Good. I tried to go to a shop and they wouldn't sell to me. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah. Me too. Bye, Anna. I hope I never see you again. You're horrible. Uh, yeah. Let's go try to go to that one. To that market. I don't know if we'll be able to or not. What? Indeed. You do look more like a messenger from above than a spawn of the earth. Well, I've talked to Gregory and he answered my questions. Have you heard the news about the plague already? The bachelor has found the real murderer. An epidemic is spreading in the town. I feel the Kanes, the Kynes, will not be happy with this turn of events. So tell me one thing. Did Gregory know what his brother and patron die of? No, he's convinced that there's no natural cause that could have possibly ended his brother's life. He's sure that there is a murderer, however indirect their methods may be. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing right there. I kind of wonder, did Isidore spread the plague to... Simon on purp- He did it purposefully, right? Yeah. Huh. I don't know what to think about that. I try to think of like what the po- Well, I guess the po possible purpose of that would be was for Isidore to end a portion of the three families and then have the kids with Artemis help rebuild the town. Yeah. So I guess in a way that makes sense. So he was murdered by Isidore, but- through means of the sand pest. Hmm. But yeah, no, he's convinced there's no natural cause that could have possibly ended his brother's life. I see. Sounds typical of him. Here's what it all means. I'm going to talk to the bachelor. Now that the murderer has been found, no one will dare continue this to search for the man-eater for a while. But the Kings will not abandon their vision so easily. And there's another danger, the mob. A danger to whom? To you, Clara, or more specifically to your sister, if the epidemic does begin, and I see nothing that can prevent it, the search for Simon's killer will very soon turn into a search for the one who caused the outbreak. If I remember correctly, you said that your sister is somewhere in the town? I mean, maybe she is, maybe she isn't. I suppose she is, I don't know. And she is indeed your twin. Are you impossible to tell apart? Yeah, that's truly how it is. It is possible, is it not, that she was the one who brought the disease into our town. Would you like to look for her? I mean, I'll devote all my time to this. 
You mean all of your spare time. Do you not realize how precarious your position is still? You have been cleared in my eyes, but people, both commoners and bound, will require other evidence. Uh, what more evidence do they need, and how much of it? We shall see. Tonight, Katarina and I are going to talk about you. Tomorrow, we shall state our will to you. And if everything turns out well, tomorrow you may already be helping me restore justice and met out retribution. What destiny Katarina foresees for you, I cannot tell. In the meantime, rest. Take the small bedroom upstairs. There's an upstairs? All right, I'll see you tomorrow. So glad it was you who gave me shelter. You'll see how it will pay off in the future. <laughs> hey, more reputation. Doesn't refill that much, but enough. Oh yeah, yeah, I don't think I've ever been up here. So we could store our items there and stuff. Very good. Oh, that's a nice crow painting on the wall. Perfect. All right, well, we will leave it there for now. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Lone, and this has been Pazologic.